we are going to use either your graphing calculator or StatCrunch. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to use your TI-83 or 84. So to find areas or probabilities for a normal distribution, we will use the normal CDF function in your calculator. To find it, it's in the same menu as the binomial PDF and CDF functions were. So to find it, press second bars to get to your distribution menu. The normal CDF function is the second one in the list. And here you have to be very careful to use normal CDF, not normal PDF. The function will ask you for a lower bound for either z or x, an upper bound for z or x, the mean, and the standard deviation. And again, depending on what kind of calculator you have, you will either see normal CDF with the parentheses come up on your screen, or you will get a screen like this one. In either case, fill in the lower bound, the upper bound, the mean, and the standard deviation. Once you do that, you should end up with something like this on your screen. So here we have lower bound, upper bound, mean, and standard deviation. Press enter, and that will give you the calculated area or probability. Here's an example. We're going to find the area under the standard normal curve to the left of z is equal to 1.17. And one point about the variable z versus the variable x, if you see a problem like this and it gives the variable a z, that tells you right away that they're talking about a standard normal distribution. So you don't have to question what your mean or standard deviation are. The mean is always going to be zero, the standard deviation is always going to be one. So first we want to draw a picture of our distribution, draw in the z-score and shape the area of the picture. So here's our picture. We're going to draw in 1.17 and we're going to shade the area to the left of that since that's what it said in the question. Now we're going to use the picture to figure out what our lower bound and upper bound for the z values are. Another thing about normal distributions is that they don't actually stop. They continue on in each direction, so both to the left and to the right. So in a case like this, where we're just going from a value all the way to the left, we can't put negative infinity into our calculator, so we'll just put in a very large negative number. Again, since we don't really have a lower bound for z here as a number, we'll put in a very large negative number, such as negative 100,000. So here's what you would enter in your calculator. You would have normal CDF, negative 100,000 for your lower bound, 1.17 for your upper bound, 0 for the mean, and 1 for the standard deviation. If you put that in and press enter, you would get this value. So the area of the region that we've got shaded in here is 0 0.8790. And the standard for probabilities is that we round to four decimal places, so that's what I did here. Let's do a couple more examples. Now let's find the area under the standard normal curve to the right of z equals 1.17. So here again we've got 1.17 and f shaded to the right of that. So this time our lower bound is going to be 1.17 and now we don't have an upper bound that's a number so we're going to use a very large positive number, something like 100,000. If you put these values into your calculator, you will get an answer of 0 0.1210. And again, remember that the total area under this curve is equal to 1. So the area that we found in the last example was from 1.17 to the left. This one is actually the complement of that. So the answer that we got here is the same as 1 minus the answer we got in the previous problem. 
Now sometimes we do have both values. So now let's find the area under the standard normal curve between z equals 0.13 and z equals 1.35. So we would mark both of those on our picture, shade in between them. And this is pretty simple. We're going to use 0.13 for our lower bound, 1.35 for our upper bound. And again, since we're talking about a standard normal curve and we're talking about z, then we're going to use 0 for our mean and 1 for our standard deviation. So the area under the curve between 0.13 and 1.35 is 0.3598. And on your calculator, the function inverse norm, which takes the probability, the mean, and the standard deviation, finds this value of x for us. The function assumes that the area under the curve is to the left of the x value. Here are some examples. First, we'll find the cutoff value for z-scores so that the area to the left of z is 0.81. So again, we're going to draw our normal distribution first. And this time, we, just, we have to make an educated guess about where our cutoff value is. And you can, you can think about the empirical rule when you're doing this. The important part here is that if our area is 0.81, that's bigger than 0.5 which means that our area has to cover more than half of the graph. Remember this is symmetric on either side of the mean, which is at zero here. So since we're going to the left of z, we want this to be above the mean so that the left of that will include more than half of our graph. So I just made a guess about where the z might be shaded from there to the left. So the idea is that this is the value we're trying to find, what value of z this is. Our area under here is the 0.81. So we would use the inverse norm function on the calculator, and here we put in the probability or the area, the standard deviation and the, oops, the mean and the standard deviation. If you put this in your calculator, you should get back an answer of 0.88. So that means that this value of z right here would be 0.88. Second part of this problem is to find the cutoff value so that the area to the right of z is 0.4677. So again, we're going to draw our distribution and make kind of an educated guess about where our cutoff value might be. Since 0.4677 is close to 0.5, that means that we should have almost half of our graph and we're going from z to the right this time, so we want to put this just a little above zero so that this is not quite half of our graph. Now because of the way the inverse norm function works, it won't tell us the value if we're going to the right. So if we have a situation like this, we have to figure out what the unshaded portion of the area is in order to use our inverse norm function. So we have 0.4677 on this side for the area. That means on this side we have 1 minus that, which is 0.5323. So that's the value we would put in our function with our mean and our standard deviation. And if we do that, we would get z equals 0 0.08. So in other words, the value right here, that's our cutoff value, is 0 0.08 just barely above zero.